Don't you love that feeling when you find surprise money like under a couch cushion or somewhere else unexpected? Well, what if I told you that each of us has extra cash just waiting to be found inside of our personal budget? For example, my friend Nick True from Mapped Out Money found over $500 per month in his case. And in this video, he's gonna show you exactly how you can find some extra cash either to spend or invest for the future. Take it away, Nick. Thanks for the intro, Chad. Let's just jump into the three steps that my wife and I have used to find extra money in our budget that we can invest with and how you can use the exact same steps to find extra money in your budget regardless of how much money you make per month. The first step is track. Imagine you're going on a road trip. You go get in your car to start driving, but you refuse to tell Google Maps where you're currently located. Without your current location, you're probably not gonna get very far on that road trip. And your finances are the same way. You have to know where you're currently located. You have to know your starting point. Yet the vast majority of people don't know how much they spend on average per month, certainly not in different areas like their bills, their groceries, and their discretionary spending. And they also rarely know the exact amount of money that hits their bank account each month in income. How in the world can we start to find extra money in our budget if we don't know where we're currently located? The best way to start getting this dialed in is to track your spending. Now, it doesn't have to be that complicated. There are tons of tools out there that you can use to start getting a handle on what these numbers are. Uh, a few of my favorites are Mint, uh, YNAB, but you can also just use Excel or good old fashioned pen and paper. The key is you just need to find something that works for your unique situation and you find a tool that you will actually stick with. And if you're married and you're trying to get your spouse on board with this whole, hey, let's find extra money to invest sort of idea, then you probably wanna find a tool that they will embrace as well. It's gonna be a whole lot easier to find extra money in your monthly income if the two of you are working together to make that happen. So I want to really encourage you to just find a tool that's gonna work well for you and whoever you're managing money with, and then just start moving. If you're not currently tracking your money, don't deliberate over the best tool possible and how many categories you should track and how many accounts you need to pay attention to. Just get something hooked up so that you can get a general idea of how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. If you can start doing that today, then two, three, four, five weeks from now, you're gonna be in a much better place to be able to actually implement steps two and three to find all of that extra money in your budget. And that brings us to the second step, which is to plan. If the first step in your financial journey is to figure out your current location over here, then the second step is getting incredibly clear on the destination that you're going to. Not just the general city of your financial road trip, if you will, but the actual address, the street address, the, the super clear destination that you're trying to arrive at. We have to know where it is that you want to go if we have any hopes of actually arriving there. Again, this seems obvious, but most people don't sit down and really think about what are they trying to achieve? What do they want their life to be like over the next few years? And in order to do this, there's two parts, the what and the why. For the what portion of the step, you wanna sit down and really map out a vision, a vision for your life over the next couple of years. We typically choose one, three, and five years out. You wanna answer questions like, where do you want to live? What do you want your day-to-day -day life to look like? Where do you want to be working? What do you want your family life to look like? What hobbies do you wanna be pursuing? Where do you want to travel? How much time do you want to spend working versus hanging out with family and friends versus exploring any other interest you have? Basically, what do you want to be happening in your actual life? Not necessarily your finances, yes, that plays into it, but your actual life, what matters to you? What do you want to happen over the next few years? For me and Hannah, we use a very simple Google Doc with headings about one, three, and five years out with bullet points under each one of those headings, which is a few things, sort of key milestones, things that we want to achieve in our life by that time. You can sort of broadly put these into different categories of general life, family, and then your finances. The finances being ultimately what supports the life and family stuff that you have in your vision. We keep this stock bookmarked and we update it quarterly to make sure that it's always up to date and actually has the stuff that we care the most about doing. For some of the things on our list, for example, at one year out, we'd like to be able to have some of the renovations done on this house. The reason I'm filming in this corner right now is because we bought a very, very fixer-upper house last year. We're slowly renovating it. We love to have the office done. 
by next year. We're also saving money for adoption. We're wanting to travel every other month or so uh, to visit family, and we still wanna be running our business full time and having control over our day-to-day -day life. As you get further out, three and five years, the amount of things tends to get a little bit more vague, but it still has the highlights, the overarching bullet points of what we wanna be doing with our life, what we wanna be pursuing, and key milestones and things that we want to have happen. So that's the what of step two planning. But the what is not quite enough. There's a number of things on this list that are gonna be really difficult to achieve. We're going to have to make some short-term sacrifices financially in order to save the money to make some of this stuff happen, which is where the why comes into play. This why statement comes from asking the question, why do you wanna invest? Why do you want to save money? Why do you want to build wealth in the first place? What is it that you're ultimately trying to achieve? Like, why are you even watching this video right now? Why did you click on a video about finding extra money in your budget so that you can invest it? What is it that's driving you to want to do this? Recently, Chad actually put out a video called I'm 10 times happier after prioritizing this in my life, where he talks about the importance of getting very clear on why you're trying to do this. For him, it came down to prioritizing time freedom, not just financial freedom. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to dig a little bit deeper than just, I wanna build wealth, to why you want to build wealth. I want you to get so dialed in on why this is important to you that you can make a statement out of it and sort of repeat it to yourself back as a mantra whenever you're tempted to impulse spend or let that lifestyle creep sink in. You should be able to fill out the statement, I want to invest and build wealth so that blank, if I don't, blank. The idea here is you're wanting to invest and build wealth so that you can achieve your why, and if you don't, what's the negative consequence that's going to happen because of it? Here's mine and Hannah's. We want to invest and build wealth so that we have the freedom and flexibility to do work that we enjoy and have control over our time. If we don't, we will likely be handcuffed to jobs that we dislike and not be able to travel and visit family or do the things that are important to us. Another example might be, we want to invest and build wealth so that we can take care of ourselves during retirement. If we don't, we're gonna be a burden to our kids and ultimately hinder their ability to invest into their kids. The idea here is that you have to dig deep. You cannot just put something on the surface like, I wanna invest and build wealth so that I can you know, be stress-free. Maybe that's true. Yes, you want to reduce stress, but you need to go much deeper than that. Dig down to the core of what it is that's really driving you. The reason this is so important is that it takes discipline and hard work to find extra money in your budget that you can use to invest. And the only way you're gonna push through some of that difficulty is to be so super clear on what you're going to achieve on the other side of that difficulty. It reminds me of this great quote uh, from Michael Hyatt that I love, where he says, you're not going to drift to a place that you would have previously chosen. The idea being that most people just drift through life, never thinking about where they're currently located financially or where they're trying to go with their money and with their life. But I don't want you to be most people. I wanna challenge you to sit down and really get clear on where it is you want to go and why you want to go there. And create that statement that you can sort of repeat back to yourself as a mantra for when this gets a little bit difficult. And that brings us to the third step, which is to spend. At this point, you've tracked your spending. You know where you're at financially. You also have really mapped out your vision. In step number two, you know where you're trying to go and what it is you want your life to look like and why you want it to look like that. Now what we have to do is ask ourselves, are we actually spending our money in a way that's going to help us move from where we're currently located to where we're trying to go? Are we spending money in a way that aligns with our top priorities, our top values and vision that we're trying to achieve. And I'll give you a hint, if you get to the end of the month and go, oh my gosh, where did all the money go? You're not consciously spending that money, you are drifting, which is exactly what we don't want to do. So the question is, how do you actually spend money in a way that aligns with that plan you've created in step number two? Well, because you've been tracking your spending, now we should be able to go look at some reports and go look at the history of our spending and we can ask ourselves a few questions. Questions like, when I look at this, is there anything in here that jumps out at me that I sort of cringe at, that I look at and go, oh my gosh, I'm spending that much there? I, I can't believe that. 
Or is there anything else that you look at and go, whoa, I mean, I, I do kind of like spending in that area, but that's probably a little excessive. And that probably is ultimately holding me back from achieving the things that I say are truly the most important things to me. On the flip side, you might look at some of your spending and go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm actually super happy to spend that much money in that category. That does align with my vision for the future. That does align with the plan that I'm trying to execute. Fantastic. We don't want to change any of those things. What we want to do is start making changes to the stuff that doesn't seem to actually align with what you've already mapped out and said is truly most important. This is what most people think of when they hear the word budget. They feel restrictive. They feel like, oh, you're going to tell me to cut back and tell me that I can't spend money over here anymore, so I need to spend it over here or save over here. And that's not what we're doing at all. What we're doing is we're trying to say, hey, what is most important to you? What do you want to achieve with your life? And then how can we make sure that we're using as many of your dollars as possible to actually achieve those things? This shouldn't feel restrictive. It shouldn't feel like cutting back. This should feel like you looking at your budget and going, oh, actually, you know what? That's not that important to me. What is important is this stuff that I've mapped out and said is most important. I need to shift my spending priorities and shift the way I'm using my money to better align with what truly is most important. And why do I think that you're not already doing that? Because most of us aren't. Research suggests that a minimum of 50% of people's decisions every single day on average are made out of habit. They're made subconsciously in the back of your mind. These are really, really big decisions like where you live and what you do for work, all the way down to really small decisions. Like when you put on your t-shirt this morning, did you put your left arm through or your right arm through first? You didn't think about that decision. You didn't consciously make that decision. You just did it. And it's the same way with our money. So much of your spending is done subconsciously. You shop at these stores, you eat this food, you purchase these things, you spend here, you pay those bills, all because that's what you've always done, or that's what the people around you do, or that's what you feel like society expects you to do. You're not doing it consciously. And all I'm trying to do with these three steps, track, plan, spend, is get you to actually engage with your money on a conscious level to move from 50% subconscious decisions to like maybe 5% subconscious decisions, at least as it relates to your finances. When Hannah and I did this and went through this exercise and said, this is what's important to us. This is what we wanna do with our life. Are we spending money in a way that helps us do that? We found over 500 bucks a month that was slipping through our fingers into habits and subconscious spending that really wasn't a top priority that we were able to take and cut and then shift over to the things that were the most important, to investing for the future, to build that wealth so that we can achieve our why. For us, this wasn't about cutting back and being super frugal. This was about recognizing that we weren't prioritizing our spending. And when we can prioritize our spending, we can actually achieve these dreams and these visions and this plan for our life much, much faster. I think you'll be really surprised at the extra money that you find when you first track what's coming in and what's going out. Make a plan for what's most important to you and what you want to achieve with your life. And then start spending only in accordance with that plan. And of course, once you free up that extra money every single month, you need to know what to do with it. So I highly recommend you check out this video right here where Chad is gonna show you how you can enjoy your time now and 10X your wealth for the long term.